easily hands down the best pronunciation I've ever had of my name. Thank you. Before I begin, uh, speaking of Mike Sargent, uh, who is right there, um, in preparation for tonight, I have one story that I think really relates to a lot of different topics. And in my mind, I was like, well, nobody there is going to ever hear that story before. And uh, Mike has a storytelling night, which I'm sure some of you know about, The Corner. And this was actually the first time I ever told this story. It's a little different now. And then I see Mike walk in. In advance, Mike, I'm sorry you're hearing the same story twice. It's a little different. Um, Donna, thank you for having me. This is amazing. I've heard nothing but great things. This is my first sound bites. Um, so thank you guys. So if you would imagine um, Central Maine, Belgrade Lakes, Summer, McGrath Pond, um, I'm eight years old. I'm waking up, scratching the sleep out of my eyes. And I smell pasta sauce. And I'm like, what the hell? But it's a familiar smell. I grew up with that. And I go down the stairs, and my grandmother is in our camp stirring pasta sauce, like the brother in Goodfellas. And that's what I woke up to every day. And you're probably thinking, well, why are you with your grandmother in the summer? Um, didn't have a father growing up. My mom was very close to my grandparents. My grandparents spent an inordinate amount of time in Maine. They lived in New Jersey. For six months out of the year, we would live with them at this camp. My grandfather was my best friend. He was my father figure. We did everything together. My grandmother was like an aunt or something. We just had fun. That's all we did. We, we swam in the lake. We went fishing. I gave my mom heart attacks by what a terrible kid I was all the time. <laughs> Um, to give you a little bit of an idea of the kind of kid I was, um, I was banned from the Philadelphia Zoo at age four. Um, apparently, they don't want you kicking any of the petting zoo pets. Turned out okay. Um, let's see. I broke my collarbone in that same year, jumping off the couch, trying to elbow drop um, a stuffed animal. Um, that's kind of an idea of the kind of kid I was. So my mom was worried about me. But anyway, so after this pasta sauce is cooked all day long, we'd always sit down. There could be relatives there, neighbors. We lived on a camp road, dirt road. Everybody knew everybody. And there was a kid's table. My mom wouldn't let me sit in the kid's room because I would always get in trouble, so I sat with the adults. And there I was, little Kyle, sitting right next to my grandfather. Justin was his name. I called him Pop. And he would get all the food. And before he would pass it to me, he would pass it to his right away from me. And me being an eight-year-old and being very greedy and, <laughs> and worried about eating, I need to eat, um, I would say, Pop, what are you doing? I'm hungry. Give me the, give me the food first. And he would say, okay, stop, stop. And it would go around to one person, two person, three, five, all the way around. I was afraid I wasn't going to get fed. Finally, I'm shaking him. I'm like, Pop, what? You could have just, I was right here. You could have given it to me. He just looks at me and he winks. That made me so, so angry. He was, a, he was a practical joker through and through. He loved laughing. He loved telling stories. And I was like, this guy is making fun of me. He knows I'm hungry and he's not letting me eat. So, to fast forward, <laughs> I'm playing soccer, youth soccer. I might be, might be in sixth grade, fifth grade, and I brought lemonade to the soccer game instead of water. So I'm running around, running around. I go to get a big slug of lemonade. All of a sudden, oof, I feel a sting in my mouth, and I spit out a hornet because he obviously wanted my lemonade too. It's sugary, it's sweet, cools you down. So I get stung in the mouth by a hornet. He took me to the hospital, brought me home. My face looks like it was swollen, put it that way. Let's me out of his old Ford F-150. I'm walking up the driveway. He swings open the door and he says, whoa, 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 okay, wait. Good job. Keep doing what you're doing, boy. And I was like, again, even at that age going, this guy is making fun of me. He's making fun of me. Why else would he say that? I keep doing what I'm doing. I got stung in the mouth by a hornet playing soccer. So fast forward a little bit more. I'm in college playing football, freshman year. We're playing an away game in New Jersey. All my relatives are there, he's there, I'm out there. First play of the game, flea flicker. 
It always works, right? I'm going to catch a touchdown. Freshman, here we go. This is it. First play of the game. Ball's coming in. Dropped it. Dropped the touchdown. Also, broke my finger. Still kind of crooked. So because my finger is mangled, I have to get it put back into place. So I have to walk around the sideline in front of the other team's fans, in front of my grandfather, get it put back into place so I can continue playing with my shame. As I'm going around to get this thing put back in place, my grandfather puts his hands over his mouth, cups, and he goes, Kay, good job, boy. Keep doing what you're doing. And the fans erupt. Keep doing what you're doing, Kay. And they start mocking him, and he's just laughing. He doesn't even know. And I'm like, why would he say that? Like, I'm, I just dropped a touchdown. Obviously, I'm not going to keep doing that. <laughs> Let's fast forward some more years. Now, I touched on in the beginning how close I was to my grandfather. We were close. When I lived near him after college, I saw him a couple times a week. We went to football together. We did everything together. He was my father figure. So it was January 2014. Called him like I do every single night, Sunday night. He wasn't doing well at this time. Um, he was nearing the end of his life. He was 86. He had dementia. Um, he was forgetting things. Didn't know my mom anymore. But for s some reason, he still remembered me, and he remembered the questions to ask me. And we had a conversation. And you know, he didn't want to talk about him. He wanted to ask me how I was doing. And all I wanted to know was how he was doing. How are you doing, Pop? How are you feeling? No, 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 it's not, it's not important. How are you doing? Tell me about what you're doing. Tell me, do you, do you have a girlfriend? How's work? How are you doing? For, for 20, 30 minutes. So finally, we get to the end of the conversation. And he says, well, I'm glad to hear everything's going so well. I really hope I see you soon. I love you. Keep doing what you're doing, okay? And then he died two days later. And those are the last words he ever said to me. And as time went on, I realized he was not making fun of me all those years. He was showing me how to treat other people, how to be grateful. A little thing like winking at me as he sent the plate around to let other people have food first. He wasn't making fun of me when I got stung in the mouth by the bee. He was happy because I was happy. He was happy because I loved playing soccer at that time. He knew how important football was to me. He wasn't making fun of me. He was saying, keep going. You got this, keep going. It's tough right now, but keep going. Even the last conversation we had, where it didn't have to be about me, I wanted to make it about him, it was about me. What I take from all of this now we as people are not meant to be the star of the show. We're meant to help people. We're meant to uplift people. If someone has an idea, they're going for something, they're going through a tough time, all they want to hear is you got this. Keep doing what you're doing. He left these traces for me all through my life of how to treat people, how to put others first. Now, when I walk into my office every single day, there's a picture of him on my wall at our store, and I touch it, and I say, thank you. My job is to do that. It's not about me. It's not about the people who buy our stuff. It's about how it makes them feel. It's about giving back to somebody else who needs it. It took me a while to figure it out. The greatest thing that you can do in life is tell someone to keep doing what they are doing. The world needs that. Thank you so much.